Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of the website sciencewriter.net and also of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Golf Victor or Good Vibrations. And what I'd like to talk about right now is the distinction between root mean square or RMS and average voltage. A lot of people think that the RMS and the average voltage are the same for all waveforms, but that is not the case. RMS means root mean square. For every value of voltage, you square it, then you average it, and then you take the square root. But for the average, you simply do the arithmetic mean, the mathematical average, directly of all the instantaneous values. And to give you the most dramatic example I can of the difference between RMS and average voltage, consider your ordinary household utility alternating current. In the United States, that alternating current is like a sine wave it goes positive and negative in terms of voltage as a function of time. Positive voltage, negative voltage, and time. This positive peak in the United States is about plus 165 volts. And the negative peak is about minus 165 volts volts. The average value over time as you go along, if you were to average every one of these points, infinitely many of them, the best you can do is to average points at increasingly, uh, an increasing number of points per cycle. Suppose uh, 60 cycles per second, 60 hertz. Suppose you were to sample the voltage every millisecond, then every microsecond, then every nanosecond, and keep averaging all those points over one complete cycle, you'd end up getting the average voltage. And the average voltage, as you can probably imagine, it's not too hard to imagine that, is zero volts. But of course, if you take a hold of an electrical cord that's plugged into the wall outlet and you grab the wires, one in one hand and one in the other, if you don't get killed, you will learn immediately that that is not an effective voltage of zero volts. The effective voltage is something entirely different. What is effective voltage? Well. That is root mean square voltage, RMS. Imagine that you were to take a simple appliance like a light bulb and plug it into the wall. Just plug it into your wall outlet. And it lights up a certain amount and it heats up a certain amount. And then you were to, and imagine it's an old fashioned incandescent bulb. Symbol, schematic symbol for an incandescent bulb looks like that. You just plug that into the wall. All right, fine. Now suppose that you discontinue the voltage, power the thing down, you know, switch the breaker off so there's nothing going into that bulb anymore. It goes dark. And then you apply a direct current voltage to that bulb instead, and you adjust that voltage until the bulb heats up just as much as it did with the alternating current wave. It heats up just as much, gives out the same amount of light. Everything behaves, looks for all intents and purposes, exactly the same. What voltage, what DC voltage would that be? Well, it would be the effective voltage. What would that effective voltage be? Well, as things work out, it would be about 117 volts DC that would pr provide the same behavior for the bulb as this AC did. And that, if you calculate the root mean square voltage, is what you get, 117 
volts RMS. So if you were to sample these voltages at points, you know, say every millionth of a second, every billionth of a second, and you were to keep making them closer and closer together, and for every single point, you square the value and you get a certain function, and then you average the points in that function. That's what the mean is. So you start by squaring the value of each point, then you take the average of all of those points, and then you take the square root. And you might think, well, doesn't that just give you the same thing as you would get as, with the average? And the answer is no, it sure doesn't. Sure doesn't give you the same thing at all. It gives you 117 volts. And the reason is that when you square every value, you change all these, these negative values here to positive values. So you're no longer getting an effective or average of zero. When you take this mean, you get something entirely different than zero. You will, in fact, get 117 squared. So, so you take the square root to get back to the original intensity that you were at. I guess that's the best way I know how to describe it. But this is a mathematical scheme for calculating the effective voltage. And of course, then that's consistent with what would happen when you grab the wire uh, as after it's been plugged into the wall. But don't. Don't do that. I mean, now please. Don't take this at face value and go ahead and see what kind of a shock you get, for crying out loud. 117 volts RMS, if you get that through your chest cavity, can, if you allow the current that that voltage can produce to flow through your chest cavity, it can cause your heart to go into something they call atrial fibrillation. Well, actually, it's ventricular fibrillation. I, I made a mistake. I'm not a doctor. But I have read up that the, all the current that it takes to do that to you, all the current that it takes to kill you is just 100 milliamps. That is enough to kill you. That is 0.1 amp. That's not very much current, but if it goes through your heart, it can disrupt the electrical workings of your heart and cause you to go into ventricular fibrillation. And if you go into ventricular fibrillation and a defibrillator is not available and a technician, a medical tech is not available, chances are you will die as a result of that electrical shock. And that is why household utility electricity can be so dangerous. Even 117 volts RMS. Anything over about 12 volts RMS should be treated as potentially dangerous. Stan Jibalisco, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Signing off for now. 73, which means best regards, and so long.